Hello, my beautiful, gorgeous friends. How are you guys doing today? Today, we're going to be talking about David Anthony and Gretchen Anthony. Now, I need to start putting disclaimers on my videos that this does contain murder. It does have some gory details. And um, one major disclaimer is this man is horrible to women. So if you are triggered by that, I'll see you, I'll see you in the next one, maybe. <laughs> Growing up, David Anthony had a lot, a lot, a lot of self-esteem issues. He was just like bigger than all of the kids in his class and that he went to school with. So this he really struggled with. He quickly found out like as he got older that fitness was kind of his thing and fitness is what made him feel confident. So he began working out a lot. His biggest inspiration was Kobe Bryant and he quickly got into basketball and he even went on to college to play basketball. After college, he came home to Jupiter, Florida where he became a very well-known personal trainer. David was said by family and friends that he was a very caring, well-likable person and everybody he met like instantly just like fell in love with him because he had just such a great personality. He was also said to be very charming, upbeat, high energy, and he always just had this big smile on his face, like nothing ever brought him down. One day David is at work and he has a new client assigned to him and her name is Gretchen. Gretchen is from like the New York, New Jersey area. She went to school up there for fashion and things and then she like made her way down to Florida. She was a teacher for a while in New Jersey and then she made her way down to Florida when she was then married to her husband Jeff who she also had a daughter named Ava with. Now in her marriage with Jeff she wasn't like the happiest and so when things hit it off with David she decided to end her marriage with Jeff. And the three of them they co-parented really really well for their daughter. They all got along, they shared custody well and they just really they just did everything for their daughter as they should. Three years after Gretchen and David's first date, they go and they get married. Then they had like a small little ceremony with just their family and friends. So flash forward to the spring of 2017, David is in their garage and he is working on his truck and the truck is up on jacks and the jacks just fell and the truck ended up falling on top of him. And um, Gretchen ran out and she did happen to save his life. She called 911, but he did have a traumatic brain injury that required him to go through a lot, a lot of rehab. And it really, really changed David. Like he just kind of flipped into like a big old grump about everything. So David's going through a lot. Like, I mean, a traumatic brain injury kind of changes everything for you. And so he is very snippy, erratic, and he keeps like believing things are gonna happen that aren't gonna happen so in 2018 David was convinced he was convinced to a T that the world was ending and he loaded up his truck he had he had clothes he had giant bags of rice in his truck pots and pans he took 10 pairs of shoes and he just took off like he just like ran away because he thought the world was ending. Like I don't know where he was gonna go if the world was ending, but he just took off. Gretchen is trying to like be there for her husband, you know, as wives are, and she's trying to just like hold out and hope that things start to get better with him. So a couple years go by and Gretchen is just like, I can't, I can't do this anymore. Like this isn't the guy that I'm in love with. This guy is just a complete ass. Like, this is not what I want anymore. So she goes ahead and she files for a divorce. She told her friends at this time that she felt bad that she couldn't help him and she really, really tried. He said that there was a lot of times where she had to end up like locking herself in the bedroom to create like a distance between the two of them during arguments because he would get so angry. In December of 2019, they're still together at this point. She divorced him like... February of 2020 so December 2019 they're in an argument and she texts one of her friends and she says and I quote I gleaned a hit of crazy look in his eyes I'm watching him on the cameras and waiting for him to go to bed then I'll go downstairs and get a knife to put under my pillow just in case and hopefully get some sleep so Gretchen is clearly like terrified of him and I think she's at the point like in December of 2018, like how do I leave him because I know that he's gonna go crazy. So she's just holding on. Type to like 
people like her family described it like she always helped everyone like she, if you were in need of something like she was going to be there for you i can imagine that it was really really hard for her to leave him so after his traumatic brain injury david was also fired not once but twice from his job because he kept having outbursts with women i don't know what it was but after his brain injury he just like hated women he not really hated them i guess but like he wanted to be like a dominant source if that makes sense so he had this violent outburst with a client of his at the gym and so he gets fired and the franchisee owner comes in and he convinces them that he is working on himself so like he needs his job back so because he's working on everything and he just you know has this traumatic brain injury and but he's working on it he's working on himself that's what he just tells the franchisee owner and the franchisee owner decides to believe him so he then gets his job back so then time goes on and david just decides to not show up to work and he had like everybody locked out of the gym and that it was a very busy gym that he worked for so he got fired for that and then during while he was getting fired by the franchisee owner he had an outburst with her as well like he did he obviously wasn't working on himself so. just saying so at this point gretchen kicks david out and he gets to go live with his elderly mother not far away and david's just losing his mind that his wife is just like leaving him he's just he's just losing it but gretchen was finally getting happy she was getting out there to date again and she was still co-parenting very well with her ex-husband jeff so after time goes on david decides that he is going to start dating again and he goes on a date with a woman to like a sip and paint class where they drink wine and an instructor like teaches them how to like paint and stuff in the middle of the class david just decides that he's going to start feeling up his date like he's like touching her legs like trying to get inside of her pants and she pushes him away and she's like no this is not what i want and he flips out he freaks out in front of the entire class and storms out but his truck was at her house and they had been dating for like a small amount of time but his truck was at her house so she ended up having to drive him back to her house to get his truck well when she goes inside of her house she sees his dog in the backyard he has bags of clothes in the bedroom on the dining room table and he even brought food over and put it in the freezer like he was just moving in so she is just weirded out by this. She's like, what in the hell? And she's like throwing his shit out. Like, no, you're not staying here. Like, this is really weird. So she tells David, like, you're not welcome to stay here. Like, I never agreed to this. Like, you need to go. So he starts freaking out like a giant baby that he is. So he's outside literally banging on the window, screaming at her, like, let me in. Like, this isn't fair like just yell it. and he's yelling names at her too like he's degrading her but also like begging to be let inside i i don't understand this man so then she decides she's like i don't know how to get him out of here like my neighbors are gonna start getting like weirded out so she calls neighborhood security and then he finally leaves once she calls them a week after that like whole bad date scenario he then goes to Gretchen's house and starts doing the same thing banging on the windows screaming at her like begging to come inside and after a little bit goes by Gretchen ends up giving in and letting him inside lord knows why she did that like bless her heart for being such a good person so he's yelling at her through the windows just like asking to come in and then he starts rambling on it and he had told family and friends this too that he was leaving to go have a fresh start in Costa Rica and he was just inviting everyone he knew and he was inviting her as well like he's like come on let's go to Costa Rica and let's all just have a fresh start so David finally leaves Gretchen's house and he decides to go down to the Riviera Beach restaurant that was kind of close by and a police officer like notices him like walking up to a group of teenagers just like being weird being super duper weird so then the cop notices that he's like pacing around back and forth like he's gonna do something so the cop is like all right i gotta like figure out how i'm going to like get like cut like pull him over or something you know like to see what he's up to because he's just acting really really strange um the cop notices that his license plate is like partially covered up with electrical tape and that's that's, that's easily to be pulled over for so the cop ends up like being like hey 
why is your license plate like this? Like, it's not supposed to be like this. So David is angry, of course, because he's always angry. And he throws open his truck door and he just starts rummaging through the truck like he's looking for something. And obviously the cop is like, he's going to pull something out. He's going to hurt me. So the cop pulls his gun out and he orders him to the ground. And David is like refusing. He's like, get to the ground. So the second officer arrives, which one of the officers just so happened to be female. I don't remember if it was the first officer or the officer that arrived for backup. But... The female officer goes to grab him where he then slams the truck door on her arm. She still gets a hold of him, drags him out and pulls him to the ground and they put him into custody. And he, so then they arrest him for resisting arrest with violence. The officers, obviously they search his truck to see what exactly he was rummaging for. And then they found a Bowie knife just like in the floorboard of the driver's side. It wasn't like a small Bowie knife. Like it was a large Bowie knife. Like it was gonna cause some harm. So then the COVID like shut down and everything becomes really, really big at this time. So Gretchen is obviously like stuck at home because COVID's huge at this point. And she like results to social media like the rest of us did. And she's posting every day and just like filling her feed with like informational news about COVID and just good things to like hopefully keep everybody's spirits up during this hard time. And then on March 19th, which wasn't really long after like the whole pandemic thing started because I think it was like March 13th that everything like got shut down. The last thing she ever posted and I quote was from like a meditation like page on Facebook and she shared it and it said when chaos is all around you the wisest choice is to create peace within you end quote. And then after that post her page just went dark like no more post at all nothing like didn't show that she was active nothing. At this time Gretchen was sick or she wasn't we don't really know. But she texts her boss and says, hey, like, I'm sick. It was like that Sunday of the March 19th that they were texting. And then that Monday, she never texted her boss anything at all, which was weird. And she didn't show up to work. So she, her boss, like, grows concerned because Gretchen is one to, like, not, not show up for work or not, like, let them know what's going on. Like, she always let them know what was happening she also happened to be really good friends with her boss so this was just a whole weird ordeal so in the morning of march 23rd her boss texts her and i quote gretchen are you okay and later that afternoon her boss texted her again and she said and i quote hi please let me know if you need something i'm really worried about you so the next day her boss gets this response from so so and so Gretchen so her boss receives this text that Gretchen had to go to the ER she has a fever 102 degrees she has low oxygen rates and that she was being transferred to an off-site location that was ran by the government specifically for COVID-19 so then her boss receives another text and it says and I quote Tested positive for coronavirus early this morning. That's the bad news, but I am at a CDC coronavirus treatment facility that only handles COVID cases. The good news is that my blood type has potential to be used in the cure. Not sure if you remember me saying that I have a strain of mad cow disease in my blood. Well, that strain is significant in gathering more answers to find the cure. For safety purposes, Dr. Sinclair and her team are strongly recommending that we maintain contact with immediate family members only. I'm using my mom, end quote. So obviously at this time, like her ex-husband, he has their daughter, Ava. So he is like being like, um, so he gets text messages saying like, I need you to hold Ava for a little bit longer. I'm on a ventilator. And this is when other family and friends start getting a text that she's on a ventilator. You can't text when you're on a ventilator. But, you know, <laughs> so he starts getting these texts saying that she is quarantined by the CDC so she can't come get her daughter like Ava needs to stay there and that she might be put into a medically induced coma and that would make her unreachable. So Ava couldn't even call her. Nobody could get in contact with her. So Jeff, like he knows Gretchen. He knows how she texted and she talked. And in this text message, there's a lot of like abbreviations, weird like grammatical things. And she was a very like grammar person. Like she was on the ball. Like her text made sense all of the time. And these just did it. So she's like, he's like, absolutely not. This is not Gretchen texting me. So he's sitting there and he's thinking and ding 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 pops in his head he's like you want to know who does text like this david david texts exactly like this and he like even like pulls up old text messages to be like yeah this is 
this is how David texts. Like, I know that this isn't Gretchen and I know that they aren't in the good terms. So this is just getting weird. So Jeff decides that he's gonna go to this ER that she claimed to have gone to. And so he arrives there and he does see her Mini Cooper parked in the parking garage. So he walks up to the car and sees that her purse is on the passenger floorboard, which looks like you're going into a hospital. Like you need your purse to like, give them like your insurance and things like that so he knew this was weird and she always like walked in places with her purse like he just knew that something was off so obviously the hospital is like closed to visitors so he goes and he calls the emergency department and a um physician there is like no she's not here she hasn't been here she hasn't been a patient here since 2008 so Jeff is like starting to freak out. He calls like her mom and family and he's like something is wrong. And they're all like, hey, we've kind of like suspected something weird is happening too. So then the family, they all decide to start calling in wellness checks. And if you don't know what a wellness check is, it's where basically it, you either call like the non-emergency line or just call 911 and you think something is wrong with a family member and they will send like the police department, usually the police department or sometimes like paramedics to go knock on the door and see how someone is. And if someone doesn't answer, then they will go into the home and do uh, like a check and see what is going on so as the police arrive to gretchen's house a neighbor actually flags them down and they're like hey are you here to investigate like the attack that happened on march 21st and they're like no we're here for a wellness check on gretchen and they're kind of like oh we just haven't really seen anything and i had heard a woman screaming for at least 15 minutes on march 21st now my thought when hearing this i'm like why didn't you call the police when you hear a woman screaming for 15 minutes and like you know that there is an attack going on like why don't you call the police like i know she wasn't involved in it but i'm just like why wouldn't you call the police if you heard something like that you know what i mean so the so obviously no one answers the door so they go into Gretchen's home and they just start seeing and getting this weird vibe and then they go into the garage where or like they go in like the laundry area and they see bloody towels in the washer so they immediately call for backup they call for investigators to come out because something's obviously wrong and investigators ended up being in her house for two full days finding things. They found like blood droplets all over the house. There was a picture that was shattered at the top of the stairs. There was blood on the comforter in the master bedroom. There were bleach footprints in the garage. The garage just had this horrendous smell of bleach. Like it was just, it was pretty clear that something terrible happened and they pretty much kind of knew that something was wrong with Gretchen but they couldn't like rule out that's like a homicide or anything at this point. So they're just like, where is Gretchen? Gretchen is somewhere and Gretchen needs help. So at this time, David is fleeing out of Florida again. He's running away again. I wonder why, I wonder why David, I wonder why you're running away. So he drove 600 miles to Pensacola where he then is on security camera footage in a, um, pawn shop and he's selling women's jewelry and he's telling the pawn shop guy he's like yeah this is from my family member that died of covid i'm just trying to like get rid of things and he has his dog at, with him too so like the dog is on video he's on video the pawn shop owner like remembers him coming in like there was like no doubt that it was him in this pawn shop so he keeps driving he makes a stop in texas but then he like creates his new life that he thinks he's gonna have in Las, Las Cruces, Las, in, it's in New Mexico. But he is there and that's where he kind of makes his new homestead. So when he gets to New Mexico, he calls the police and he's like, guys, Gretchen is okay. Like you guys don't need to worry. And they're like, well, can we talk to her on the phone? And he's like, no, she doesn't wanna talk on the phone, but she did write a statement for me to read aloud to you guys. And police are like, what in the hell? Okay. He said that she had claimed that there was a financial thing going on with her job. She was fleeing from Florida because she feared for her life because of this financial thing going on with her job. And she was also running away from her ex-husband 
who she had like no beef with, but she was running away from him apparently. The police are like, whatever. Like obviously we cannot believe this dude. Like he has a bad rap. Like he's kind of lost his mind. He ran away to New Mexico just randomly. Like something's up with this dude. So they then on March 29th, they get a warrant for his truck since he so claims that Gretchen happens to be with them. And so the New Mexico police are helping them tremendously with this and they pull him over and they do a search warrant on the truck. And because there wasn't a warrant for his arrest, he was free to go, but they did take the truck with them. So when they searched the truck, they found two Amazon Echoes in his truck. And then they, as well, they found um, security cameras that have clearly been like dismounted. You could tell that they were just like taken off the wall. So back in Florida, they knew that Gretchen had security cameras at her house. So they are calling the company to like get the footage back. And so the company ends up sending them the footage where they, ends up sending them the footage from the garage and the porch where the cameras were not were, were like missing like the rest of the cameras were still intact at the house so when they got the video that all of the detectives on the case they sat down and this is when they watched david murder gretchen so they watch david and he quietly sneaks onto her porch which is like connected to the back part of the garage he then gets into her garage and he's standing there and Gretchen obviously like hears something like he's not being like completely silent. She hears something. So she goes and opens the garage and sees David standing there in the dark. And she says, and I quote, well, she more so demanded, what are you doing? End quote. She screams at it. She's like, what in the hell? David ends up grabbing her and pulling her into the garage with him. And so they are not in frame of the camera during this and but you can like hear her screaming in the background and she screams she first screamed and i quote alexa turn on the garage light she then shouted but it was muffled alexa call 911 and then on the third time yelling she asked alexa to call 911 again as the investigators keep watching this security camera footage they see david's face come into the frame and he goes to like cover up the camera and like pull it down and while they're like seeing his face the camera obviously like shifts as he's trying to pull it down and all they see is Gretchen's bloody head and they knew right then and there that this was a homicide and so then on March 30th they get a warrant for David's arrest this whole thing goes very quickly like these investigators are on freaking top of this and they get this case closed bada bing bada boom and so the New Mexico police, they they get told about this warrant, obviously. So they are looking for him. They're searching for him, looking for him. And it wasn't really hard to like kind of track him down and like where he was going because he kept emailing them, asking them like when he was going to get his truck back. Like he thought he was going to get his truck back. So then right before midnight on March 31st, they find him at a gas station where they then arrest him. So back in Florida, they obviously, they like fully need to have david like confess so they go to her ex-husband's house and they're like hey like i know that this is a really hard time but is there any way that we could like have your daughter like record something to get david to talk so the dad agrees and the daughter both agree they're like yes let's do it so she says on this voice recording and i quote david it's ava i love you i'm scared i miss mom i need to know where my mom is please do the right thing and tell me where my mom is please i love you end quote and this voice recording did nothing because David obviously has no heart at this point. So he is just like, nope, I'm going to stay silent. And he stays silent for eight months. He does not talk to anybody about anything. He like will, refuses to like even talk in court, like to a lawyer, anything. So when David breaks his silence in December, he says pretty much like he'll make a deal with the prosecution. Like, He'll show them where the body is as long as he only gets a 38 year prison sentence. So they agree to this and three miles from Gretchen's home is where he shows them where Gretchen's body is. She was wrapped in a blanket and just pretty much thrown into the woods behind a nursing home. During court, um, Gretchen's younger sister, she was the only person in the family to like take the stand and she pretty much just like said what she wanted to and at one point she said and i quote you can never be forgiven you're disgusting and if you watch it she just tells him over and over again like you're pathetic you're disgusting like you don't deserve to live like you deserve to be in like the worst prison ever and i totally agree with her like she 
was very well spoken to like she didn't get angry she said it in a very calm meaningful manner and to which then David took the sin he said and I quote this is stupid and I quote men live by their illusions and my illusions saw COVID-19 as an end of a world prophecy and an Armageddon I felt compelled to escape no matter the cost when actions become detached from a consequence that's when madness occurs end quote I don't know why I said occurs like that, but you know, yeah, whatever. Shut up, David. Why? Did, I don't even know why they let him take the stand to like talk back to the family. Like that was stupid. So he is then also asked, so he's like standing up there and he's like, is there anything I can do to ease like Ava's pain? Like, is there anything I can say to make it feel better? And someone in the crowd just yells, no, <laughs> they just flat out yell, no. And it just gets dead silent in there. And so David has said that he prays Gretchen's family will forgive him because now that he's in prison, he is a man of God. He's a man of God and he's perfect and he studies the Bible and he says that it's not just to forgive him to forgive him, but to prove that love and forgiveness are more powerful than hate. Okay, David. Okay, David. That's the end of this horrendous story. Um, if you like look up pictures of David, he's a freaking loony bin. He just looks like a loony bin. Oh, you can probably see it in the thumbnail that he is just a freaking loony bin. So yeah, that's the end of this story. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. I'm working on another story. I'm getting, I'm getting good at this because if I don't make promises, things happen. <laughs> we'll see. Um, thank you guys so much for watching. Do not forget to like, comment, share with your friends, and subscribe. Let me know your thoughts about this case down below, and I will be back here soon with another one. Okay, bye guys.